It's a land of mysterious hills and shimmering horizons, whose wide open spaces are caressed daily by the rising sun's golden rays. All of this awaits if you can find the place, deeply immersed in seemingly endless hectare upon hectare of forest. I grew up here in the east of Mpumalanga, close to the Swazi border. This is where I learned to thrive despite trying circumstances. I'm Tulasis Wesemelane. Welcome to the village of Dan Donald, my hometown. Established under apartheid, Dan Donald used to be part of the homeland of Gangwani. Growing up, I always knew it was founded on displacement and forced removals. But I had no idea of the full extent of this painful history until recently. <laughs> As well, chrome grants by chrome dry 74 75. But how to buy it to clean down the way? Okay, I'm going to go to the white cache. 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 i this is where my original home stood from the early 80s to the mid 90s. This imposing hill was for the longest time the first thing I'd see when I woke up every morning. With time, and once I'd moved away from here, I learned to appreciate its beauty. But back then, I found it quite depressing. It reinforced a sense of being trapped, with the odds stacked against me. A feeling I suspect many of Dan Donald's young people continue to experience today. In 1995, when it became clear that infrastructure such as roads and electricity wasn't going to reach this particular valley, my family moved to another section of Dan Donald, which brought me close to this school, which would have a deep impact on me. Opened in 1994, it was one of the last schools built by the Gangwane regime. Sol Mbuyane was SW Ntlapo High School's founding principal, a man who would be a key influence in my own life. I remember coming here, I was alone, not even a single teacher, there was no fence, only two blocks that you see, four, uh, four classrooms in each block, which means eight. But because of the overcrowdedness, we realized that we are not going to do well with the two blocks. Then we built a mud block of two classrooms. I was part of the class of 1997, which by the standards back then had achieved remarkable results with an over 60% pass rate. Mr. Mbiane, the last thing I want to do is something I've waited all these years to have to do. I'm going to <laughs> do something unusual. This is 50 rand. I'm it's only 50 rand. I'm going to give it to you to buy whatever it is you want. And I know it's not a lot, but let me tell you why I'm giving you 50 rand exactly. And I know you probably don't remember this. I get emotional when I, I talk about this because with 50 rand, Mr. Mbuyane, you don't know it. You actually changed my life with only 50 rand in 1998. Tell me more. In 98, I had, um, Application fees for Rhodes uh, application forms for Rhodes University. Yes, but because of the condition of poverty at home, in this area in general, yes, fifty rand seemed like an unattainable amount of money. 
mm. it was a lot of money and that was the application fee in 98 I came to you you gave me that 50 rand with that 50 rand I applied to Rhodes University I was accepted got on to NSFAS studied finished became a journalist so you changed my life with just 50 rand so for that I just want to say thank you very much these are the things that you 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 probably don't even remember that you gave me 50 rand at any point. Forgive me, Tula. I'm you don't becoming remember. a bit emotional. Yeah. You don't remember, you will not remember it at all because that's not the kind of person you are to keep a record I really of what feel, you have done. I really feel emotional. But I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for that 50 rand. <laughs> and for that, thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know what you will buy for 50 rand. I, 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 I can to, tell you I now. Re, I wish to respond. <laughs> Allow me to respond, yes, Tula. Please. You know, I don't value things in the monetary value. I value the appreciation that you showed to me. Actually, the appreciation that you're showing to me is worth billions of rands. Even though resource challenges persist, my alma mater today is a much better school than the one I attended. What is better is that the, we can access also the internet. Uh, and if you cannot do it uh, practically so, you, you, you can make use of uh, uh, the, the DVDs that you can uh, download from the internet. The, which are the services that were not there before. We did not even have electricity at that time. Another person I met at SW Ntlapo that would impact my life is my friend Steven Sibego, whom I've known for 22 years. Well, it seems that they told me that now, when they were removed from Comprance, they picked the right spot in Tantonat. And Umangbobos are white and not. They said, no, there is a river near us. So for them, goodbye call, it is because of the river. They said, no, there was a nice forest here. So we thought, so And I know exactly what he's talking about. Because before we had communal taps, this well was the water source in my neighborhood. And even today, it's still quite common to see people ferrying firewood from the nearby forests. As we sit and assess the progress the area has made over the years, he agrees with me that the most visible marker of the development journey Dan Donald has traversed is the state of the main road. This road is Dan Donald's main link to neighboring towns and the closest district hospital, which is about 23 kilometers away. This stretch of road is arguably proof that at times, service delivery is a matter of life or death. Before it was tarred in 1999, it was tricky at the best of times and downright treacherous when it rained. There were countless stories of people traveling this road in an emergency, but failing to survive the arduous journey. <laughs> Tarring of the road was also important for another reason, facilitating what little economic activity Dan Donald has, mainly around the vast forests that surround it. But the forestry sector's legacy and contribution to the area's upliftment is debatable. And in the absence of job creating forestry related industries, Dan Donald presents very few economic prospects. 
Spatel Rabiga Kulu, Jamabantaba, Abasha, Abe, Banama Dreams, Sifundile, Sicilina, my diploma way to see a clean desolate as Nazo is in Jela Zoguti, Sikuta Zeg, as now my maybe ma Amasai trainings, Lapoguza Conam Lambe, as a ma business, Lapos figures fundis or corner, Guza must kill Sisi training, Jenges Yinda, we see Bona and Ati, Abantaba Nyama, Bakubega by a Pambili, and Jenges when you elite diverse manji. Sisi Conna Bon and Jew, Bugelam Lambe, ETS, Yakola Puyabon, go on Kambili Tinat. Kungati tina sizengo kufagasha leli izwe aksinge leto. Kwa ngati nale government ina hati mtambe ahisubu gang. Sia wabona makanze la yaketo. Ayazama nao marangati kwa wona aswelo kusegele ga nga njela itizo ngom. Zonke lezi nitu zigute na hati vele. Zigute, zigute. Ngati tina sika peshe yogolo hati. Siyefa ngale kukumi ngoma marasikone ngomu kuhichoina na tisikule pimboli nye na. And even initiatives that could mitigate the dire economic situation, like this small business center started under the Gangwane government, are underutilized. Andris Nkosi is among the few artisans busying themselves here. He and his employer, the owner of this steel workshop, specialize in security gates, burglar bars, and window frames. It's a good story until you think about what's really driving demand for the products Ngosi and his employer supply. So funera manje babuye ba kala la bo mama la so funa kwa kwela ma padla yo vhala The rise in crimes like breaking and entering is a worrying trend I've been hearing about for a few years now Some link it to growing use of drugs by unemployed youth Something local hair salon owner Lydia Ngwenya believes can be changed with the right intervention one Dan Donald resident I know who's not resting on her laurels is this lady, fondly known to all as Mamri. Her gracious looks belie her, shall we say, advanced age? When I was growing up, if the department store she and her late husband ran didn't have what she wanted, then you'd have no choice but to go to the town of Amelo, some 110 kilometers away. If anything, living here for more than 34 years has taught her that positive change comes slowly in Dan Donald. Eng nigi temba, ilo guti abantu baya buya la, enti guya kupugi standard ngoba, jenga ayole college kona la. Tuishe ngati i yenzinda uya buya, yona besi ifata la la. Dan Donald's also taken a few other remarkable strides in development. Key among these is almost universal access to electricity. And nearly every home now has a piped water connection in the yard, even though the actual supply continues to be very erratic. And on this visit, I've personally been impressed by the opening of this community library, something that used to be beyond our wildest dreams when I was growing up here. But sanitation continues to lag far behind. Dan Donald also continues to be a difficult place in which to make the transition from childhood to young adult. This was my place of solace. The one place I could always run to as a youngster and escape all of life's troubles. And it kept me from straying as well. 
which is why it hurts me that Dundonald's young people continue to be deprived of sport and recreational facilities, which could help to channel their energies in the right direction. With the kind of talent in various sports that I've seen here, I'm convinced that if projects such as this incomplete sports complex were seen through, a few of Dan Donald's youth could pursue sport professionally. It's this history and context that ignites passions with every election season. Mm. Yeah, those are smell and the woods. democracy Itemba lingani kakhulu ngoba lihlala lifika a a a asiqale ukulubona namhlanje sezivotile siyabaniki vote nje ngami nje kafusha nengingabala ukuthi ngesingami kube kungathi endaweni yakithi singalibamba le le lokhetho singabaniki le le power yale yale khetho singavoti siligcine ngakithi ngoba nasibanika kungathi babaleka kakhulu mhlambe nasingalibamba singabaniki ukuthi siye khethweni kuleli site nje ngikhulumelisa ka Moses sangaba Singapore <laughs> Manjay <laughs> Rooted in dispossession, yet somehow, in this once desolate land, life has sprouted and grown for so many. Testament perhaps to Dan Donald's residents' sheer resilience, almost inexhaustible patience with slow development. Looking back helps me understand why Dan Donald always seemed a few curves behind other areas. But it also helps me appreciate the progress made thus far. And I can only hope this year's elections mark the beginning of an era in which this humble village will rise and soar to its full potential.